we do need to turn our attention to matters of an international nature because another story in the news, Joe Biden has announced a new Israel-Hamas peace proposal. Netanyahu's coalition, though, allies, they threaten to quit the government if he accepts Biden's truce. So could we possibly see peace in the Middle East? Let's speak to Philip Ingram, former British Army intelligence officer, joins me now. Philip, good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here on Talk. So uh, what do you make of this new announcement by Joe Biden? I think it's an indication of Joe Biden getting tired with what's going on and the pressures that are being put on not just US domestic politics, but domestic politics around the world by the continuing war between Israel and Hamas. And he wants to force Hamas and Israel into some form of solution. Uh, what do you make, though, of this particular um, uh, response, though? Benjamin Netanyahu has reiterated that Hamas must completely be destroyed before Israel will agree to it when end its war in the Gaza um, and, and says the US-Gaza deal is a non-starter. Yes, well, Netanyahu is in a very difficult position. You know, he's, he's given a military objective to the destruction of Hamas when you cannot destroy what is a cause militarily. Um, and therefore, there needs to be a political solution alongside it. He is doing well in destroying Hamas's military capability, but we're still seeing their ability to rocket Israel um, and to resist the Israeli troops that are, that are moving in. And that doesn't solve the whole of the, the Palestinian issue. Um, the uh, proposed peace deal by itself seems one of the more credible ones that Joe Biden's put out, but he's forced it on them. There's There's negotiations today which I don't think Israel are attending in, in Egypt, um, looking at you know, how, how they can begin to push this a little bit more. But you know, anything that would give Hamas any um, uh, sort of freedom to stay even in a little bit will upset Netanyahu's very, very fragile coalition government. And his two ministers are his finance minister and his um, uh, uh, defence minister, I believe, or, or national mm. security minister who are um, threatening to collapse the government. We also have to remember that if not Netanyahu's government collapses, he's got potential criminal charges that, that are hanging over him and have been hanging over him for years. Therefore, it's not in his personal interest for the government to collapse. So he's caught in a really difficult position here. But it shows that the West is getting tired of what's going on. Um, the West may be tired of uh, what's going on, but I think what we should do perhaps now is just hear a little bit of what Joe Biden said on this new proposal. This new proposal has three phases, three. The first phase would last for six weeks. Here's what it would include. A full and complete ceasefire. A withdrawal of Israeli forces from all populated areas of Gaza. Release of a number of hostages, including women, the elderly, the wounded, in exchange for release of hundreds of Palestinian prisoners. There are American hostages who would be released at this stage, and we want them home. Additional some remains of hostages who have been killed will be returned to their families, bringing some degree of closure. So that's just a little of what Joe Biden was saying. I mean, Philip, you know, as you listen to that, I mean, it's kind of difficult to stay awake when uh, listening to Joe Biden. I mean, is this, <laughs> yeah. is, I mean, it's why is it taking him so long to come up with this proposal? It's hardly rocket science. Well, it, it, it is rocket science when it comes to trying to work out something between the real complexities, the diplomatic complexities, the um, cultural complexities, you know, the red lines on so many different sides. And of course, you're negotiating with a terror organization whose um, st stated aim still remains the destruction of Israel and the murder of all Jews. So you know, Netanyahu is trying to then turn around to his extreme right wing um, politicians and suggest that you know, he should accept some form of negotiation. And so, I, so I'm assuming that it, in, until or unless uh, we have some recognition by Hamas that Israel uh, must exist and does exist, and indeed that uh, the rights of Jewish people should be uh, alongside the rights of anybody else, um, then then there's going to be a problem because inevitably yeah. we have these huge protests which are, as you say, building up pressure in the US. We've seen them on the US campuses and actually we see them here in the UK that we see these continued protests on our streets and people chanting all manner of uh, comments, uh, many of them anti-Semitic and really quite unpleasant and threatening. Um, and, and this issue is utterly toxic, isn't it? 
It is utterly toxic. Biden let his mask slip there whenever he turned around and said, and some of these hostages are Americans. You remember we've got the US presidential election coming up in November. He wants to be seen as the figurehead that has brought Americans back from you know the the um, the, the horrors that are going on inside inside Gaza. So that's probably his his motivation. The the, the trouble is even if Hamas gets destroyed militarily, which can't happen, um, you've then got Hezbollah and you've then got lots of other little groups around the place that have all still got the stated aim of the destruction of Israel um, and the murder of all Jews. And, and this is where, you, when we look at things from a long-term peace in the Middle East perspective, there isn't one until we can get that wider political solution going. And, and we're, that we're is very close. And sorry, we're very close to it. Sorry to interrupt, but that that is kind of the key, though, what you explained yeah. there, which is until or unless uh, national and international communities are are prepared to accept that Israel has a right to exist, then Israel will take a very strong and hard line on the basis that. For many years, uh, by the international community, they were encouraged not to yeah. fight back when people took pot shots yeah. at their borders and tried to incur and tried to undermine and tried to take. And so they, they did what the international community wanted. And one of the reasons why perhaps they've been as strong as they have is that because the international community wouldn't support them, they feel as if they must do as much of the destruction job, at least for a generation or two now, whilst they have the opportunity, because things can't get any worse in terms of the support or otherwise for their nation, uh, and they will get as much of the job done as possible. Very much so. And um, before October the 7th, we were getting closer to a position where the international Middle East community were starting to accept Israel and would have put pressure on. Um, we've got Saudi Arabia normalizing relations. We've got the UAE normalizing relations. We've got flights between Tel Aviv and the, the various capitals that are there. And of course, you know, Iran then felt left out. And surprise, surprise, Hamas is Iran backed. You know, there, there are much longer term implications for what's going on here. And, and we hear the horror that uh, Israel's imposing on the people of um, Gaza as they attack Hamas and the collateral damage that's caused there. We're not getting a lot of reporting on what Hamas is still continuing to do and supported by Hezbollah in rocketing Israel and trying to rocket um, and kill Israeli civilians. The civilians aren't dying because the Israelis have got this iron dome system that's shooting the rockets down. But that doesn't mean that they're not being attacked and the threat isn't there. And it's a military threat. And this is where I think our reporting is unbalanced and giving those protesters on the streets of London and elsewhere an unbalanced view of what the reality is on the ground. Well, you see, that that again, I think, is the point, which is um, if Hamas had wanted to stop uh, this particular um, uh, incursion and if people really want to see an end to the fighting or otherwise, then, you know, as soon as there is a lull in proceedings, then Hamas once again take a... Um, they take a pot shot at Israel, they still fire weapons, they still fire munitions, they still put their people in, in harm's way despite or whatever uh, is going on. And I do find it extraordinary that that reporting isn't uh, done or set yeah. out. And I, and I do think that it leads to an unbalanced uh, view and response. Yeah. Having said that, um, do you think, uh, Philip, this, this latest piece offering on proposal will have any legs or do you think that it will like the others uh, previous to it just um I, I, I don't know be written on a piece of paper and forgotten and blown in the wind i think it's got legs in the fact that it is causing people to sit down and think about um some form of uh, peace negotiation at the end of the day the only way conflict stops is by diplomacy your war is diplomacy by other means um, and you're not going to get your final solution until people sit down and talk. And th this is forcing the Israeli government to try and rethink the red lines, rethink how they can talk with pressure from their biggest support of the United States. And it's forcing Hamas to sit down and think with pressure coming in from um, uh, other Arab states that are saying, look, we've had enough of this as well. It's disrupting what's going on. Remember, Egypt is losing a lot of money with um, the the uh, impact with the Houthis attacking international shipping going the re through the Red Sea and therefore not going through the Suez Canal. So there are much wider implications to what's going on here. There certainly are. Um, and I dare say there are wider implications as to what's happening with elections and various other things and changes in power uh, that will all have an impact on this story, which I dare say will dominate headlines for weeks and months to come. Philip Ingram, former British Army intelligence officer. Thank you.